Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice for radio. So today, we are continuing our deep dive into the recently announced Pokemon rotation by having a little bit of a look at all the cards that we are going to be losing from Burning Shadows. Once again, we are looking at the big losses. The cards that used to be good, and the cards that had a lot of potential but never really stood up to it. Before finishing looking at all of the trainers and putting brief notes about the ones that have been reprinted, so yay! We get to keep them. So starting off with the big losses then, we are saying goodbye to Vileplume. Now if this rotation were announced six months ago, this wouldn't even be on this list. But as it is, it's taken a lot of play lately, it stops basic Pokemon attacking, and it's actually seen a fair bit of play in a fair few decks. We've even seen it played with stuff like Verizon GX, so that you can literally get a couple of them out, and then play Verizon to clear your field other than them. And then it just stops all of these Tag Team GX decks. It's really, really nice, and it's seen a lot of play lately. We are losing Necrozma GX. It's a big, hard-hitting GX that can essentially hit as much damage as you want if you get enough energy on there. It's been pretty good in Malamar decks. We're losing Marshadow GX. Now, I did consider not putting it on the big losses list, but the fact of the matter is, it's a good card. And it's seen quite a bit of play for quite a while. It can use the attacks of any basic Pokemon in the discard pile. Which means you can use it to copy Tag Team GX attacks. But on a two prize Pokemon. And it also hits weakness against stuff like Picarom and Zekrom. And for that reason I do think it's a good card. That is going to be missed by a whole bunch of people. So it does deserve going on the big losses list. And finally, we're losing Gardevoir, that card that won the World Championships basically as soon as it was released. And although it's not been as good since, we've seen it played with Sylveon, we've seen it played with Golisopod, we've seen it running around with a whole bunch of stuff. It's got a great ability that attaches extra energy, a great attack that can do a lot of damage if you pile energy on, and a great GX attack that can recover anything you want. It's a good card. Now, you used to be cool. There are a few Pokemon in this set that used to be really good, but really dropped off the radar. Golisopod GX was also in the world's winning deck. It was a really good card. For a long time, 120 of you became active this turn, and then it was played with stuff like Garboda. Really good card, a lot of play for a long time, but it's not been played for ages. Salazzle was a card that was routinely just popped into a whole bunch of fire decks. It had good attacks for two energy, especially the main attack, Diabolical Claws, 50 damage for each prize card you have taken. As soon as you took three or four prizes, this became a really good attack. But it's not been played for a while. Same as Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh was a great card for a very long time, especially with stuff like Kiawe. 180 for 4 energy, it was a smashy card ladies and gentlemen, it was really good, really powerful, it won a lot of tournaments, but recently it's just not been fast enough, and it's not been one hit KOing Tag Team GXs, and that's a bit of a theme for a lot of Pokemon that haven't been good since Team Up came out, they can't one hit KO Tag Team GXs. And we're losing Tapu Finny. Now, Tapu Finny did probably see the most play in Golisopod decks, but it was really good because for one energy, and you could always use Rainbow here if you wanted, which was nice, you could just shuffle your opponent's active Pokemon and all cards attached to it into their deck. It was a really good way of just clearing out that one thing you couldn't deal with. And then we're losing Diancy. When Gardevoir decks first came around, Diancie was there to get your stage 2 out. And it was only really for fairy decks, because you needed a fairy energy, but it was seen as a really good option. And then everyone just started playing Alolan Vulpix instead, and this basically went away and never came back. Now there were a bunch of cards in this set that saw a little bit of play here or there, but never really shook the format. Charizard GX had a really powerful GX attack that discarded the top 10 cards of your opponent's deck. Although Tordoreklev did play around with it for fun, 
and was able to make it work because he's that gosh darn good. It was never quite good enough. Heatmore could recover cards from the discard pile. That made it really nice as a disruption deck, kind of as a budget Sableye, but it was never quite good enough, unfortunately. We also say goodbye to Alolan Ninetales, which got immunity from EX and GX Pokemon. It was nice, and it saw a little bit of play here and there, but it never really shook the format. Gyarados was bad for a very long time, and then it went and won a regional piloted by one of the Schultz brothers. It was just a way of giving Zoroark an answer to Blacephalon. Largely... Although it did have a couple of really big attacks, the fact that it did damage for each Magikarp in your discard pile and you could use Ditto Prism Star to have four Magikarp in your discard pile was good, but it was largely a Blacephalon counter. We're losing Raichu, which was really good for automatic paralysis when you evolved up. Seen play with Stoutland over in the expanded format, where it is, of course, still legal, but it saw a little bit of play in standard and does deserve a mention. We're losing some Viper, which is a bit sad for me because any time we had a Pokemon that did poison, I'd be like, Sir Viper, adds to the poison. And Carl Peters did win a big tournament using this and stuff like Poison Barb, but make no mistake about it, this was a fringe play at best. We're losing Rhyperia. When you evolved up into it, your opponent discarded the top three cards of their deck. It was a fringe play for a while, and Super Boost Energy did really help it in later months, I suppose. But it never really became amazing. Crabominable was a card that I really, really wanted to make work. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it just never did. The fact that you could do 80 for a single energy while hitting weakness on stuff like Zoroark just seemed really good. And I know a bunch of people tested it, but it never really proved great. Similarly, Alolan Muck GX. It seemed like you do lots of damage if your opponent's got special conditions on, and you can use Salazzle here, and it, it again, it seems so good in theory. Never worked. Darkrai GX was good for a very short period of time, where you would basically pile energy onto the field with the GX, and then smash with the Darkrai EX from Breakpoint that did more damage for each energy you had on the field. Should have been great. Never was. We're losing Rabombi, which was a great way to search out energy. Even when we lost Professor's Letter, and we just didn't have great ways of searching energy out, it still never saw a huge amount of play. And we're losing Noivern GX. Some people argue that Double Dragon Energy not being out was the thing that ruined it. And it looks on the face of it like it should have been a meta-breaking card. One attack that stopped your opponent playing item cards. Another attack that stopped your opponent playing special energy. But it was too easy to play around for too many decks. And we didn't have double dragon energy. And that was enough. Now in terms of trainer cards, we're losing Ace Roller. Which is a biggie, especially because we're losing Max Potion. So these big blocking decks just don't have a great way of healing. It's a little bit sad. We're losing bodybuilding dumbbells, which did see a bit of play here and there for adding a little bit of bulk to Pokemon. We have still got buff padding, but that's only for Pokemon with a retreat cost of four. We are losing escape rope, which is a little bit sad because we're also losing Guzma. We're losing a bunch of our switching options. We've basically just got switch left and switch raft, neither of which are great at the moment. We are losing Kiawe, which that, that was how we got a lot of energy on. Honestly, I don't think Kiawe is a huge loss because we're getting Welder. And I know Welder only attaches two energy, not four. And I know it attaches from the hand, not the deck. But you also draw three cards and it doesn't end your turn. Kiawe's out, ladies and gentlemen. Welder is better. And we're also going to be having to say goodbye to Mount Lana Kyla. It's not the biggest loss ever, if I'm honest with you. This seemed like one of those cards that should see a fair bit of play here and there. It does increase the retreat cost of your opponent's Pokemon that are basic and yours. And it seemed really good because Tag Team GXs are out now. Honestly, most people just play the Absol instead. 
The Absol from Team Up does the same thing, but it can sit on your bench and do it. And a lot of people are just choosing to use that. I have seen people play them both together, but Mount Lanakyle has never been amazing. We should be losing Lana, but it's actually staying because we got the full art in Ultra Prism. It's not an alternate art, so Lana stays around. That's right. Ace Roller gone. Guzma gone. Lana stays in the format. Who doesn't stay in the format is Olivia. Not a huge loss, if I'm honest with you. Searched for two Pokemon GX. Nobody ever really played it. We are losing Plumeria, though, and that was a big deal. Because Plumeria is our way of just discarding energy from our opponent's Pokemon. We've already lost Team Flare Grunt. We're losing Enhanced Hammer. We've not got the same options for getting rid of energy. This is a fairly big loss. We are losing Poe Town. Did damage when your opponent evolved their Pokemon. Saw a bit of play with stuff like Crobat. So that you could just really pile the damage on. And it was quite good with Drampa. Because you could do the damage to yourself to activate the extra damage. But it really went away. It was kind of a staple in Garboda list initially. But then it went away and never came back. We are losing Rotom Dex Poker Finder mode. Which looked at the top four cards of your deck. Put them back in any order. Or shuffle them into your deck. It was never quite impactful enough. It was kind of helpful, but not good enough to take up a space in your deck. We are losing Sophocles. This was one of the ways we draw four cards. You can still do that with something like Nita. But come on, that's only when your opponent's got an active stage two. Sophocles, you had to discard a couple cards from your hand. But you could discard cards you didn't want, or indeed if you're playing something like a Naganadal deck, energy that you want in the discard, then draw four. It did see some fringe play. We're not losing Super Scoop Up because it was reprinted in Celestial Storm. We are losing Tormenting Spray. Now this let you look at a random card in your opponent's hand, and if it's a supporter card, you discard it. This seemed really fun in decks where you could get your opponent down to a one-card hand. And then either it's a supporter card and you discard it with Tormenting Spray or it's not and you don't really care. Those never became good enough. We're losing Weakness Policy, which honestly has seen almost no play. It was great back in the day with Primal Groudon, but that's because it blocked all the trainer cards that would remove it. It's not really seen play since. We are losing Wick, which is a supporter card that honestly saw next to no play. Each player basically refreshes their hand. Fine. But it was never good enough to make an impact. We just played stuff like Cynthia instead. And finally, we're losing Wishful Baton. Now, this was a good way of keeping your energy on the field, which is especially upsetting because we're also losing EXP share, which was about the only other way to do that. This isn't a set that's impactful on the same level as... Guardians Rising. But make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, losing cards like Guzma and Ace Roller are going to have a huge impact on the format. There's not really any Pokemon that we're losing which are that huge. But I know a lot of people played Marshadow. Valplume was starting to make a big impact. And Gardevoir never really went away. It kept coming back round. So it's not quite Guardians Rising. But make no mistake, this set will be missed. So this is a part of the video, ladies and gentlemen, where you tell me what you think about this set. Tell me the cards you're going to miss. Tell me your favorite cards from this set. Go nuts in the comment section, but please do remember the rules. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where we talk about games that don't have Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.